Welcome. This is Tips with the Transition, the Career Roadmap, and I'm Maria Tomas Keegan, your host. About uh, six seasons ago, I created this show to share resources that help women to navigate life and career challenges and to know they're not alone. So every week, my guest and I co-create a show to inspire women to become more confident, resilient and brave in their careers and in their lives. So if something resonates with you as we're having this conversation today with my guest and you want more information, uh, check out the show notes below for the various ways you can connect with my guest and me. So decisions can be hard sometimes, right? I know that that's the truth for me. It has been over, you know, during certain intervals of my life, decisions just get hard, especially when we're navigating uh, career changes and transitions. So what if we could help you today make better, easier, and more aligned decisions? Would you like that? So I want you to listen up because I've invited Jessica Urquhart, a decision empowerment coach, to share her fascinating perspective on decision-making. She calls it a whole human approach, leveraging your sense of logic, motivation, and intuition. And by doing so, she helps people make better balanced decisions through significant pivots in their lives and careers, leading them to choose fulfilling paths forward with more confidence, clarity, and intentional direction. I love that. that that's key. We're going to hear more about that in a minute. Jessica has honed her decision support strategies over more than 20 years of guiding corporate executives, boards, and investors to make multi-million dollar capital risk and investment decisions. As a certified professional and transformational coach, she now can share all of those valuable decision strategies with career change makers like you. So let's learn from Jessica today as she shares practical tips and strategies for making better decisions and confidently moving forward during a career transition. Hello, Jessica. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Maria. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so thrilled to be co-creating with you today. Oh, I love that. Yes. That's what we do here, right? When we're together and we're collaborating and we're talking about things that are meaningful for other women, that's exactly what we're doing. We're co-creating something that is of value, um, what I like to call resources for women mm -hmm. to tap into. So I always love to start by pulling the curtain back a little bit uh, on my guests. So would you give us just a little more background about you and your career path? Sure, I would love to. So as you generously offered in the introduction, I'm Jessica Urquhart. I'm a decision empowerment coach. Um, I live in the city of Chicago and uh, with my partner and my new puppy. And uh, I have been working in the coaching space since about the end of 2020, but I had previously a 20 year career in finance, accounting, financial services. Um, and in 2018, I decided that uh, enough was enough. I was ready to uh, take a big leap and start moving my career into directions that felt more fulfilling and aligned with uh, what I felt were um, my real gifts and best characteristics and what really served my soul and my heart. I did some experimenting through different aspects aspects of entrepreneurship and uh, naturally, organically fell into the space of coaching. And uh, since, since then, I've been developing my practice as a decision empowerment coach utilizing many of the skills and systems and frameworks that I used in finance through those 20 years to help people really bring um, not only an analytical approach to their decision making, but also 
looking into what their hearts were speaking to, what their souls were speaking to, bringing all those pieces together for a whole human approach so that you can feel better aligned and more fulfilled with your choices. Fabulous. Thank you for that. I appreciate just kind of setting the context for us. So you, you empower people to make better balanced decisions. And you just mentioned by teaching a whole human approach to decision making. So let's dig under that a little bit. Explain to our audience what you mean by a whole human approach. So if, to me, that means really um, honoring and considering all aspects of what it means to be human, all facets of that, um, especially as we're making decisions about career changes uh, that's going to have a big impact on your life, your day-to-day -day life and your kind of future trajectory. Um, so a whole human approach, I simplify that as kind of really focusing on the logic of your mind and the underlying motivations that are expre expressed through your emotions and the inner callings of your intuition, your inner wisdom, your gut instincts, bringing all of those pieces together to, um, to, to find paths forward that are going to be more satisfying and, uh, and aligned as you move into the next phase of life. Okay. So to make decisions better, more aligned, We've got to use all of our tools, right? Our logic. Our, 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 okay, so if we were to put this in woo-woo terms, it would be mind, right? Spirit and body, right? Everything. Our sure. senses, our intuition. Yeah, so we can't ignore any of it is what you're saying, right? Yes, and that is such an important point. Thank you for calling that out. That is really um, the concept here is that if we were to deny any one of those aspects of our humanity, whether it's the mind, body, heart, soul, um, it creates inner tension. And so by honoring and embracing all of these aspects, these directions of information that we're receiving, we can create a, a better sense of wholeness and aligned and a, an easier sense of flow within ourselves about the, the choices that we're making because we haven't, you know, shut off any aspect of ourselves by saying that's not valid or that's not true or that's not meaningful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, yeah. Good point. Really good point. So let's talk about why this approach makes so much sense when we are facing significant career challenges or uh, choices. Things maybe are happening around us that we may not have a lot of control over. Uh, why is it so important that we take this approach during those times? Yeah, especially in the case of careers, career challenges, career changes, career transitions, these have big impacts on our lives. Uh, we really, so many of us put so much of ourselves into our work. We, you know, we're there at minimum, usually nine to five every day, five days a week, and oftentimes so much more. Like that's a big aspect of our lives. So when we step into these spaces, it's so important to, um, to feel really confident about uh, what you're what you're putting all your effort towards. You don't want to be kind of constantly trapped in this cycle of looking back and wondering what if, what if you had chosen a different path? What if you, you know, if you do make a change, did you make the right change or should you have stayed? We want these decisions of moving forward and into transition and into change to feel good, to feel exciting, to feel energizing, and to carry that forward so that we can continue to grow and flourish rather than kind of swimming around in this cycle of uncertainty that we get so trapped in if we're, if we're not intentional about our path. Okay, so you brought up, you brought up a, um, 
a thought for me, and I talk about this with many of my clients, it's the self-talk. It's that inner dialogue that starts to happen when we are trying our best to make decisions that serve us well, that where we've connected on, on all of these levels or we think we have, yet fear pops up, self-doubt, anxiety, worry, so many things that I can think of and rattle off. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your, how your approach maybe can help to minimize or mitigate those. Mm, I love that question. Thank you. So uh, the first thing is to acknowledge it, you know, not, not to shove those emotions away or to ignore them. We're honoring those. We're paying attention. We're listening. Uh, it's natural to feel these emotions of fear and uncertainty and anxiety. That happens to all of us. And also, I would encourage that we consider those emotions as helpful data points, inner indicators that are just sources of information. And then once you take a moment to acknowledge what's happening, then you can look a little bit deeper and get curious about why am I scared? Why am I feeling uncertain? Why am I feeling this sense of anxiety? And you can start peeling back the layers to find the root so that you know where to focus when you are planning your mitigations. I was previously a director of risk. And so my entire job was to help acknowledge that risks existed and to help identify mitigations and also to get comfortable when uh, there were certain aspects that were just uncontrollable risks. There's always going to be an unknown that you don't know about. That's the, the facts of life. So uh, finding the underlying root kind of driver of those emotions looking for mitigations in maybe a strategic kind of like mental logic way. Um, and then also working with yourself to build up the trust that even if you don't know what you don't know, you can handle it. It's you're, You'll figure it out. You've survived this far. You've done well this far and you'll continue to thrive as you apply yourself going forward. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, so acknowledge it first, you know, and try and, and trust that you're not the only one who feels these things. Everyone does. Yes. Risk is a, um, it is, an, it's one of those, um, those evils that will always be there, like fear, right? It's always there. I love that you said you don't know what you don't know. Because when that happens, some at some point, you just got to go with your gut, right? And there has to be trust in that too. And that's the intuition part that you were talking about in your whole, whole human approach. So we can't ignore that and we have to learn to trust it. Yes. And I would challenge even to transform the notion that risk is evil or bad and see it as actually an opportunity to find where there is risk. There is yeah. also an upside. So if you're sensing a bit of risk, I could challenge to, you know, flip that on its head and find the opportunity and see how you can balance that out to get a more, um, maybe reasonable, rational perspective on what you're facing. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly a more positive one. You, if you spin it right in a more positive way, that risk becomes uh, easier to navigate for sure. And maybe the upside will be more likely to happen. Yeah, I think so. We naturally tend to think of the downsides. Um, you know, it's very common for people to get pretty focused on the negative consequences or, you know, we could do everything right all day. But if we do one thing wrong, we focus on that one thing. It's, you know, a pretty common 
tendency for a lot of people. And so, as you said, kind of shifting your focus into the positive will also help kind of um, create a greater visibility into the opportunities ahead. Yeah, something else just occurred to me, and we haven't talked about it yet. Um, one of the things that I share with my clients is this idea that if we are grounded in what matters most to us, our values, and we use them, those values, our top five, to be kind of a checklist for every decision we make, when, when you've taken your whole human approach and, and integrated, you know, your logic, you've thought it through, it feels good to you in your gut. And um, if, you, if you know what matters to you most and you can run that choice or decision by your values and you're checking them off, you're going to say, and it honors my value of, then I think you have, you, I believe you have a decision that you absolutely should go with and see where it takes you. I love that so much, Maria. I don't know if you know this, but the, one of the gifts that I would like to offer your audience is actually that value identification exercise uh, yeah. that you can go and download and actually go through the process of getting really clear about what your what we call the core values but you know like what's most important to you in life so that when you're facing those decisions you have kind of like a brain work that supports a, a framework that supports right. your brain right. of you know doing that kind of intuitive check but in a logical way yep. so that you feel really good about what you're stepping into because you know that you have taken the time to reflect and honor what's most important to you right. and you know how your decision supports that. Exactly. And even if it doesn't ultimately work out, you can step back and say, okay, I made that decision based on the best information I had at the time. As it turns out, it wasn't perfect what did I learn from it? Right? You didn't fail. Right. So I think a lot of people get stuck with, you know, the, the tough decisions. These are not easy. None of them decisions about your career or your life. They're not easy. Um, but I think if you can look back and say, what did I learn from that? And how will I do, how do I want to do it differently? What's the next decision I need to make? Because every decision is never your last. <laughs> so true. So true. Yeah, I think the reflection on uh, what is and isn't working after you've made the decision is so important. It's a continuous process. You know, yeah. these choices never end. Every day we wake up with choice. You know, I yeah. like to talk about living a life in choice. You know, every every moment is an opportunity to choose either, you know, what you've done before or something different. Right. Yep. Someone once asked me, what's the difference between a choice and a decision? I I love the difference between choices and decision. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I love this. Um, so what I'm feeling compelled to say is that actually the root of the word decide means to cut off. So I think a lot of us get hung up on, oh, if I make a decision, then I am cutting myself off from, you know, other opportunities or what I've done before. Uh, it feels very definite and uh, final. Mm-hmm. But when we think about choices, choices are options. Choices are constantly presenting themselves. So that's one of the key distinctions that I like to call out. So thank you for doing this is that, you know, decisions are never, sometimes you can't go entirely back to the place that you were before, but decisions are never 
the end all be all. You will always continue to have ongoing choices and we forget that. So reframing the decision as like this, you know, final definite, um, you know, obstacle that you need to overcome and seeing it as just a series of choices that you're going to continue to make over time. And you can always change. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense to me. Uh, so here's how I think about it. I think about choices. You said the word choices are options and there are multiples of them. A choice of one is no choice at all. So there always has to be for there to be a choice. There has to be more than one opportunity to choose from. And then you get to decide on which one you want to try out first, knowing that there's still these other choices there, right? They're, they're there for you to, they could be your backup plan, but you need to, you do need to decide at some point which way you want to head now, right? In this moment, based on the information you have and you decide this is the choice i'm going to make this is the decision i'm going to make on this choice mm -hmm. and i still have these others in the wings they may not be the best choice at the moment but they may be a better choice down the road a piece but there will always be more choices to make so i love that you said that hmm. yeah so we are we are we are skirting each other in, in the way we, we talk about choices and decision. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I like your frame as well. Yeah. Okay. So I would love to know why this whole human approach is so important to you. What about it was uh, just reeled you in? Thank you. Uh, so I would say that in my previous career, I worked in finance. I also worked with a lot of engineers. I worked with a lot of analytical minds, a very logic, fact-focused uh, mindset. And I grew such an appreciation and respect for that way of thinking. Um, but again, being in that space, I always myself felt a little bit incomplete. And then when I moved into the coaching space, everything's just a little bit softer in this space. You know, we talk uh, a bit more about emotions and um, there's a really strong push for um, kind of focusing in on your intuition. And I see on both sides often that there's a little bit of almost like demonizing one way of thinking or the other, like... Um, like if you say that ultimately you need to trust your gut and that is the the best and final that you're going to get, well, I feel like that's not fully respecting the um, the the logic and the analysis that's available through our minds. And when we are so logic and analytical focused, a lot of times I'll hear like, oh, you can't bring your emotions into it. You can't get your, let your emotions affect you, but your emotions are, have information. And so you're not really giving respect to uh, the inner indicators that are coming up through that. And so I love to bring all of these perspectives together into one complete package. Um, and I find that by doing that, that we are, again, able to create and facilitate more of an ease and flow in the decision making process. Again, by not saying that one is better than the other, or that one is bad and one is good, like they're all kind of data points and um, they're all useful. And I think that honoring that is is has a lot of value in itself. Wait, you know what? I love the way you put it. They're all data points. Mm -hmm. So if we if we want to gather enough information for us to be uh, to have the uh, the the best set of data points that we can have 
on which to base a good decision, then we really need that information flow from all of those sources. Hmm. Some of us are more logical than others. Some of us are more analytical than others. Some of us are more in tune to our intuition, our heart, our emotions. And what I hear you saying is if we can, and we all have all of them, some of them we major in more than others. And it, it really depends totally. on the human being we're talking to, right? So, you know, I love to ask questions of my clients about the way they think so that I can understand, are they more logical, analytical, or are they more prone to uh, speaking from the heart, feeling things, uh, and, and intuiting things, right? That is great information for those of us who serve our clients, right? To know how they think so that we can help them to navigate the, the choices and the opportunities and the options that will come up for them as they're making these kinds of major career and life decisions. Yes, so true. And I love that you um, are pointing out that, you know, we all have strengths in these different areas and they're not always in balance. And so that's where working with someone like a coach can really help to bring a bit more balance into that. Someone who can challenge your natural perspective and offer opportunities to bring in other pieces of information that are available to you that maybe you're not accustomed to acknowledging or accommodating. Right, right. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, just getting a new perspective from, yeah, from someone who is maybe, maybe has a more balanced view or maybe has kind of the opposite perspective that you might have mm -hmm. uh, and, and making sure that you are, uh, you are considering all of the possibilities before making a major decision and taking this whole human approach bringing everything into play to your advantage, I think is, is what the, the, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a gold, it's a piece of gold here. What Jessica is sharing that if we, if we bring it all together and if we don't know how to do that, ask for help. But when you bring it all together, the decisions that you make will serve you best until you need to make the next best decision. Beautiful. I love yeah. that. Until you need to make the next best decision. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> my heavens, uh, we, you said it earlier, we are bombarded daily by choices we can make. Mm -hmm. Bombarded daily. And it can get overwhelming it can get confusing. It can cause a lot of self-doubt. But when we start to think about what matters most to us in the moment, and those values, by the way, and, and I love that Jessica is sharing a gift with all of you uh, to help you hone in on your own core values to make decisions easier. But when we understand what, what uh, matters most to us today, which could be different than what mattered to us yesterday, because our priorities change, life shifts, things happen. And what's, what matters to us most today is what's important to make today's decision. That is such a salient point that even if you do this values exercise and you have this clarity as you enter today's decision, values change over time, you know, like we evolve as people and that's exactly. natural. So as you're thinking through these things, you know, it's important again 
this, uh, I'll go back to the decide versus choice, you know, you're going to make a decision here, but that doesn't mean that your choices are going to end from that point forward, you're going to continue to face challenges to have new choices, and your values will evolve as you learn yeah. from this. Yeah. Yeah, because as humans, we evolve daily. Thankfully. <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> yes, thankfully. But there are some people who get stuck thinking, oh, I was raised with this value, whatever it is. And, and it must, it must remain, it must mm -hmm. be my, you know, it, it must be with me forever. It's so what my parents taught me to be, to do, to whatever, right? As adults, we all get to question that, to get curious about, does it really serve me now to make choices and decisions about my life? based on that value, it just doesn't feel like a good fit anymore. And it's okay to say, you know what? It isn't a good fit. This one fits better. And that's what I'm going to put into the equation by which I'm going to make my decisions because those decisions feel better. So sometimes if decisions have not felt quite right, like I know some people who have said to me, I can never make a good decision. All my decisions are bad. There's something very basically wrong there on what they're basing their decisions on, right? So dig under that if that's the way you feel. Yeah. And I'll share that that's really kind of the process that I went through as I made my own career transition when you know, I started out in my career out of school, I was very focused on creating financial stability for myself. That was like what was most important to me. And so I built my career on that and I prioritized that for so long. And then after a certain point, you know, I had the stability that I wanted. I had kind of like checked the boxes of what at one point when I, my younger self had aspired to. And I had to really sit with myself and say, okay, like, am I actually willing to put a little bit of risk on that financial stability to find a new direction in my, in my path? The one that feels like more true to me today as who I am now. And, you know, I hired help to get me through that process because you get kind of trapped in a box of thinking yep. of, you know, this is what it's supposed to be and what it should be. And, this is what society thinks is good enough. Like I should be grateful for what I have or, you know, some of these challenges that we have when we're choosing to leave something behind to try something new. Um, it wasn't easy to do on my own. And so it was very valuable to have help. Yeah, it's it. I don't know anyone who couldn't use a coach, honestly, a coach, <laughs> a mentor, someone, a sounding board it, it, that I have had many in my career. Uh, in my corporate career, I always had at least one mentor and a coach. Since I've left corporate, I have had many coaches and mentors to get me where I am today, to get me to feel like I, I really have some value to share and feel good in that, right? To feel grounded and centered in that and to know it, you know, to my bones, and to be able to do what I do, you know, just as a, as a, as a giver, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of who I am. But getting help, I'm so glad you said that because getting help to make the choices to figure it out, right. To, to peel back, you, you talked about it before, peel back the layers to figure out. So who am I now that things are changing? around me, within me, who am I now? What do I care about most now? And what do I want now? So that word now means it's in the moment, right? It's, it's for now and the, and, the, and the near future that you're making a decision. It is not a forever thing, ever. 
It doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned it about starting your career, wanting to create financial stability, going through school. How many times did you think back, who am I doing this for? This is what my parents expected of me, or this is what society expects of me, you know, to, to go to college, to get a good, to get a degree, to get a good job, to be responsible, you know, all of that stuff, living by somebody else's expectations of us. Mm. And I'll even say, you know, at that time, that version of me, I was all on board. You know, I, yeah. I, was, I was making my choices to take that path because I felt like it was serving the directions that I really wanted to go in at that time. Yeah. And I'm just different now. I, I have yeah. different needs, different desires, different visions. And that's beautiful and OK and exciting. And I know a lot of people just like you, I did the same thing. This is what I want. This is, but I realized as I looked back that that's what I was programmed for. Yeah. Right. From a Thank very you. young age. Yeah. Programmed mm -hmm. for that. And that's what I thought I wanted. And it worked for 30 years in corporate. But I do, I look back and I think, okay, so maybe about year 20, I was starting to feel a little nudge that was not quite it wasn't quite working out. I wasn't quite as happy. I wasn't quite as fulfilled. I wasn't really doing quite what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what it was. And that's when, if you're thinking of feeling of that nudge, if you're wondering, you're not quite sure what the next thing is, that's when the benefit of having a coach or a mentor to step in to work with you it, it, it pays dividends, huge dividends. It sure does. And I think it's so helpful to pay attention to those little nudges because, you know, over time that kind of soft alarm in the distance is going to get very loud and very annoying. And yeah. <laughs> so if you can, <laughs> if you can address that earlier yeah. so that you can, you know, get ahead of the change and direct yourself with intention about the path that you're going to take um, in the future, then it's less of like a panic situation of, oh my right. gosh, you know, I have to get out of this scenario now. Yeah. You know? Oh, you, you know, you just said the word, some panic. That's what I felt because sometimes we don't get to make that decision. Mm. Like yes. for me, mm. the decision was made for me. I, uh, my entire, I and my entire global team, we were just laid off. Oof out of the blue, no, no forewarning, uh, panic set in for me after I took care of my staff. That's what set in for me. So sometimes the decision doesn't, you don't get to make the decision. Uh, and, and, and when the very uh, strong emotions of fear and panic set in, it is, it is absolutely um, a, for me, it was a saving grace for me to have someone to talk to who had been where I'd been, where had been where I am or was at the time and had gone where I'm going. S having someone to guide me, kind of put, put a light on the path for me was a saving grace. So all of this relates back to getting clarity about making decisions using all of your senses, using all of your, your intellect, all of that information that we've got piled up in our heads over, if you've been on this year, uh, on this earth, a, a, a nanosecond or two, you got lots of stuff in your head that, that are tools in your treasure chest. So true. Yeah. 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 And, and using them in uh, an organized, strategic uh, framework yeah. can yeah. be so helpful because otherwise, a lot of times we just let that kind of swim, swim around and it feels right. like a lot of chaos inside. So, yeah. Okay. So we, we end every podcast with this way. But I ask my guest to please share some 
some key tips and takeaways. It's why I call the show Tips for the Transition. So how can listeners implement their own whole body approach to start creating better balanced decisions right now, Jessica? Yeah, so that's a great transition. So for a whole human approach, I would, um, you know, start super, super basic. Start with uh, three questions that you can ask yourself that honor your mind, honor your heart and honor your soul. So what are the facts telling me? Use, use the, the benefits of logic to think about the facts that you're facing. What are my emotions telling me? Take a moment to pause and acknowledge them and even sit with them sometimes here and, and pay attention to what they're telling you and enjoy, <laughs> appreciate them, uh, peel back the layers to find where they're stemming from. And also, uh, you know, sit quietly and pay attention to what is your intuition telling you? What is your gut sense? Where, where is that innate wisdom that you hold inside? Where is that guiding you towards? Um, and if that's a challenge, then I recommend to spend some time in nature. Nature has a really beautiful way of helping us connect with what is our, our natural tendencies, our innate abilities, uh, bringing us back to the core of who we are. Uh, so I, love that. Suggestions I love that. I love that. I love questions. So you asked some really potent questions. What are the facts? How do you feel? And what's your gut telling you? Powerful. Sit down and write about those, right? Mm -hmm. Just write, write stream of consciousness. Or, you know, if you are an analytical person, what are the facts might look like a, a pros and cons sheet, right? Yeah. And it, I think being intentional about those three questions is so helpful. It seems simple and we assume that we're kind of doing this anyways, but if it's happening in the background, if it's not really being brought forward and paid attention to, writing it down yeah. uh, in a methodical, strategic manner can be so valuable. Yeah. And looking back on it, reading it. And and I love the, the way you said, sit with it. So it doesn't necessarily mean sit down with it. Keep it in your mind as you're going through your day. When you're taking a shower or you're, you're gardening or you're taking a walk, things are going to come to you. That's how the subconscious works. Mm -hmm. And that's the, 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 you know, there are gold nuggets that come up for you when that happens. Go back and write those down too. Mm -hmm. I love that. Those are three great questions. What are the facts? How do you feel? And what does your gut tell you? Mm -hmm. All right, Jessica, what's your next one? Well, I kind of hinted towards this already, but uh, spending time in nature is really a, a helpful way to bring all of these pieces together. And I'll say that, you know, with your mind, spending time outside or with nature, appreciating green space can help provide calm and reduce anxiety. So that brings a sense of mental clarity and a sense of peace into your decision-making process. Um, and also spending time in nature actually helps us to kind of think bigger, think more beyond the immediate need and uh, kind of the uh, broader picture. Um, so that's very helpful as well. And again, appreciating it just kind of the natural flow of life helps us connect with um, our, our innate truth as well, but who we are at the elemental core. Yeah. You know, and, and for everyone, it's different, right? So, so for some people being in nature means, you know, being at the beach, uh, or, you know, listening to the waves or, you know, being in the mountains, hiking, it comes, it, it could be, it could be walking your dog on the green belt in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, it could be for me, uh, it is sitting in my backyard, listening to the birds, feeling the breeze and sitting among my, I, I'm a little bit of a sap here. Uh, both my parents are gone. I have two trees planted in my backyard hmm. and they are in honor of each of my parents. And I feel like when I sit there and I've got a 
I've got something weighing on my mind. I sit there, I feel like they're guiding me. They're, 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 they're there for me. I'm hearing the breeze flow through the branches of those trees. And I'm, I'm often getting, you know, a blossom dropping on my head, you know? <laughs> whatever it is for you. That's what it means being in nature, whatever it is for you. I love that because I love the, what you said, it helps us to think bigger when we get out of the trappings of our four walls, it helps us think bigger. It really does. I love that you said that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. You got another one? Yeah, absolutely. I would say get outside of your box, get outside of your comfort zone, join a community that's like totally different from what you would normally do. Meet people that kind of have the opposite perspective of what you do um, in a way that's respectful and uh, collaborative, not in like, you know, don't battle it out over political views or something you can, but that's not fun. So, you know, enjoy, but enjoy the perspectives of other people and that will help open your mind and help you connect with the aspects of yourself that are maybe not your natural tendency. So if you're super analytical, jo like join a creative community, an artist community, or if you're super intuitive, like come speak with uh, some engineers and really get to understand like how their brain, brain processes information and develop a bit of a respect for their way of thinking as well. And I think by um, putting yourself into new situations, working with new people, new mentors, new coaches that have different views that you do, uh, it really can broaden your sense of opportunity and perspective on the world. And I think it's a great way to um, test your own ability to think differently and see things differently. Hmm. I, it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes by Dr. Wayne Dyer. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Ah, that's a good one. And it's so, it's so true. And talking to people who think differently than you do is a great way. I love that idea. Hmm. Jessica, thank you so much for being here and sharing your unique perspective on how to make sound decisions for us. I would love for, I, I just know that people are going to want to connect with you. What is the one best way for them to do that? Yeah, I love hanging out on social media on Facebook or LinkedIn, but you can also find me on my website, uh, decisions.altazcoaching.com. That's A-L-T-A-Z coaching.com. And uh, you can find more about my background, my services, or ways to connect with me on there. So that's kind of a one-stop shop. That's fabulous. Once again, thank you so much for being here. I really, I really enjoy this conversation. And I hope that everyone will take advantage of your free gift. Um, all gifts are free. I don't know why I say free gift, but <laughs> your gift. Um, to, to check in with your own core values. Uh, I love that she shared a values exercise for you. Thanks again, Jessica. Thank you, Maria. And for those who uh, are watching and listening today, I really appreciate that you're a part of this community. And if you enjoyed this episode, subscribe, comment, click a star, tell us how you feel about it. And as I said at the top of the show, I love creating and sharing resources for women. And as a career and life coach, I work with women to help them navigate challenging times more quickly and gracefully. So if something in this episode resonates with you and you'd like a fresh perspective, reach out and let's talk. The links to connect with both Jessica and I are in the show notes below, as I said, as well as a a link to my private Facebook group called the Career Transition Roadmap, and we could continue the conversation there. So let's meet again here next week, Wednesday, as always, same time, same place. Because you know what? I believe it's our time to thrive. So let's thrive together. Till next time, I'm Maria Tomas Keegan, helping you turn transition into triumph. <laughs>